Earlier today, I was up in the edge of the woods checking on something, and I leaned up against a pine tree, and when I let go of it, I had pine rosin all over my hands. And it reminded me of a couple of years ago, Chitter, or Katie, Chitter on the blog, she brought me this great old big piece of pine rosin, the biggest glob that I'd ever seen. I've never really even seen it in that manner. It was just a big hunk of it. Usually, you know, it's dripping down the pine tree. Anyway, I was wary when she brought it to me because I never know what those girls are going to be bringing me. When I, they were little, one time they brought me a whole handful of hairless baby mice that they'd found in the wood pile. I was like, put them back, put them back, put them back. Anyway, so when she first showed it to me, I was like, ooh, gross, get that away from me. She said, oh my gosh, it's just pine ross and good grief, you're just overreacting. So then once she told me what it was, I was more interested and we poked around on it and and smelled of it. That's the first thing I did was get it up to my face and smell of it and inhale that wonderful pine scent that makes us all think of Christmas, or it does me, just it just smells so clean and fresh, but still somehow the holidays, you know. Anyway, I asked her what she was gonna do with it and she said she didn't know, she'd figure out something. Well, I don't know what she ever did with it. I tried to find it before I started shooting this video because I thought knowing her, she probably left it laying on the porch somewhere and it's probably still there, but it's gone, so I'll have to ask her what exactly she did with the giant pine rosin. Anyway, um, that day that she showed it to me and when I smelled it, like I said, and I thought of Christmas, I also thought of, I was immediately took back to being this little skinny girl in Granny and Pap's yard. There was a the bank. Now there's a garage there. They dozed out and made a garage, but before that it was just this kind of a bank with a trail leading up to the top of the bank, and there was two huge pine trees up there. They were gigantic, and that's where my playhouses were, and it was like a bed of, you know, pine needles, and that's just where I love to play house. I think one of my cats was buried there. It was just, I just had special memory, so every time I smell pine rolls, and those are the two things I think of, Christmas and that my playhouse at Granny and Pap's house, one of my playhouses, I had them in different places, but that was one I really liked because it was kind of up high. I always felt like that I could get up there on that little, like I was on a little perch and I could view out everything that was going on in the holler. So that was nice. Anyway, those are the things it reminded me of. So Pap told me when he was a boy, people chewed pine rolls in for chewing gum. I couldn't hardly imagine that because it's so sticky, but maybe you have to get it at the right time of the year, I guess. I didn't ask him that. I should have. But when he told me, I did think, well, I wonder if it tasted, you know, because it smells so good, I wonder if it tasted good, too. So I asked him if he really enjoyed chewing pine rosin, and, and he said, well, it's all right if that's all you had, but I'd never, there's never a day that I'd turn down a piece of juicy fruit for pine rosin. So that was his thoughts about it. But John Paris, one of my favorite Appalachian writers, he specifically wrote, though, about Western North Carolina, the mountains of Western North Carolina, instead of all of Appalachia. But a lot of what he wrote pertains to the whole of Appalachia. It would be very similar. But I'm gonna read you, he wrote a piece about pine rolls, and I'm gonna read you uh, one little quote from it, or a little piece of it. So the old man paused, a smile played about the corners of his mouth. There was a twinkle in his eyes the kind of a twinkle that belongs to a little boy, but rare in the eyes of a 98-year-old. Law me, what I wouldn't give to go gumming and get a wad of pine chewing gum, he said. Best tasting stuff in the world. But I don't reckon I could do much good at chewing resin gum with store-bought teeth. They wasn't made for it. And pine resin gum is might tough. But when I was a boy, I chewed a lot. That I did. Most everybody chewed gum then. Same as they do now, only it wasn't the chewing gum you buy. The kind we had was better than any store-bought chewing gum that was ever manufactured. Oh, the times we boys had going gumming, it were a frolic. That it was, a springtime frolic. Spring was the only time you could go gumming. Well, that answered my question about when you was, you know, the stickiness of it, so that makes sense. Maybe in the spring it was the gum from, or the pine rosin from last season from over the winter and it had hardened I don't know but anyway that's interesting so he obviously loved it a lot more than Pap did uh, one of the interesting things in it is it were a frolic so frolic is an old word used in Appalachia to describe like a good time just a really good time I don't hear anyone use it today but you'll see it in a lot of older uh, books and different things where they're quoting people so if they said it was like he did it were a frolic it just means it was a really good time they had a really great time a lot of prepper and survivalists like outdoor woodcraft and those kind of websites or YouTube videos or whatever they have 
if you Google pine rosin, you'll see some of those sites come up and it's amazing how many different uses there is for pine rosin. I never knew that there was that many. They, some people use it in a medicinal form, which is really interesting to me because there it is free for the taking. You can, uh, like I said, search and you can read more about that. People use it as glue, so that's I can see that because it's so sticky. Once it gets on your hands, it's almost impossible to get off. You almost have to let it wear off. It can also be used as a candle, so if you do a Google, you'll probably find a way for someone to instruct you how to make a candle or how to use it that way as a light source. And also, it could be used, because it's flammable like that, to fire, start fires. So it's just uh, an amazing thing that if you do a Google, you'll be amazed like I was to how many different uses there is for pine rosin, other than just getting sticky on your clothes like I got today. But it, Thinking of pine rosin and how it would start a fire makes me think also in pine trees makes me think of rich pine. So rich pine is when pine trees decay, all that resin kind of solidifies. Not always, but sometimes. Sometimes the tree just rots away, but a lot of times it'll it'll solidify into this uh, piece of wood that will never decay. It just stays there. And the best part about it is it's flammable. It's like a natural uh, fire starter. People in different areas of the country call it by different names. We call it rich pine. That's what I grew up calling it. Some people call it lightered wood or fat wood, lightered knot, or just lightered. I've heard that. But we, we grew up calling it rich pine is what we called it. And I hope this fall, after deer season's over with, maybe we'll go on a trip in the woods and we'll go hunt some so that you can see it firsthand and see how we just kind of always keep an eye out when we're hiking for it um, so that we can bring it home because it makes starting a fire so much easier and we have a wood stove in the basement that we heat with in the winter so just a tiny bit of rich pine will just make your fire start that much easier and the best part is it's just a natural thing that you just go find it's free you know but when i was thinking about rich pine and and pine rosin i thought about wonder if there's any other words or things that i could talk about from appalachia well the only one that come to mind is in the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English, they documented that pine needles are called twinkles. Twinkles, I've never heard that. So I'll be interested to know if you've heard that before, where pine needles are called twinkles. I thought that was really interesting. And I can't remember where it was documented, but that is one of the entries in the Smoky Mountain Dictionary. Smoky Mountain English Dictionary. Sm Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English, I'll get it right one time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little short video about pine rosin. It's really a fascinating thing, other than getting sticky, you know. Um, there's other uses for it, so that's interesting. I hope you'll leave a comment and tell me any experiences you've had with pine rosin or any other uses that you know about. But mostly, I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.